I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba Hashem HaMashiach Yehoshai, Ba Hashem, Rechakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone GMS. And salutations to the whole four leg brethren out there pushing the word in sincerity and in truth, risking their lives and their freedom to do so. And of course, to those men, I'd like to say Shalom, who are Baraki Ma'othom. Peace and blessings upon you and the Holy Spirit, the Rechakadash. And investors, they tend to benefit in life when they make sacrifices for today in order to gain something for tomorrow or in the long run. Okay, and this strategy works very well in the business world, and the same concept applies to our lives. The same concept applies to this truth, man. Okay. And then, you know, this investment term is called short term pain for long term gain. Okay. Short term pain for long term gain. Because we're making the biggest investments of our lives, we're making the biggest investment in history, and that is sacrificing our life. Okay, enduring the pain of this world for today in order to obtain the kingdom of heaven and enjoy it in the name of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai forever. All right. So that's what I want to go into today. I want to go into short term pain for long term gain. And what inspired me to do this lesson was the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 17. And it says, And if children then heirs, heirs of the most high, and joint heirs, with Hamashiach Yahusha, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also, that we be also glorified together. All right, so the scripture is saying that if we do the same pain that Yahusha went through, sacrificing the flesh, being reviled and hated by men, and basically enduring and sacrificing the world, all right, enduring and sacrificing the world. Scripture says we're going to be glorified also together because we endured that pain for the truth's sake. We endured that pain for Hamashiach Yahushua. We went through the same pain that he went through. So if we, be, if we suffer with him, if we sacrifice, suffer with him, we're going to also be glorified together with him, man. All right? And that's what the scripture is saying. It mentioned the word heirs about three times in the scripture. So what I want to do, I want to look it up. And the word heirs means... Word heirs right here. The word heir means one who receives by lot an heir. One who's at one who has acquired or attained the portion allotted to him. Allotted. What does that mean? Allotted. Look it up. Allotted. There it go. Allotted. And it says, give or an apportion something to someone as a share or task. Okay. One who was given a portion. All right. So we're saying in Romans 8 and 17, if children then heirs of the Most High and joint heirs with Hamashiach Yahushua, so the Lord is going to give us our portion. All right. Was basically the kingdom of heaven all right the the, the 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 world man the scripture says what that the world was created for our sakes and we're going to enjoy that portion but what we have to suffer first we have to make the sac the necessary sacrifices in order to obtain that portion that was allotted to us all right verse 18 and it says for i reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, okay? And verse 18 is very important, man, because when people, you know, especially the beginners or people that never made investments before, you know, in their life, they would think that, you know, short-term pain is, is actually absurd. They think it's crazy to sacrifice, all right? But the scripture says what? That the sacrifices that we make, the pain that we go through, making those sacrifices... It's not even worthy to, to be compared off of the profit that we're going to make off of this investment, sacrificing our life, enduring the pain of this world, being hated, okay, by our own people. It's not even worthy to be compared for the glory that we're going to receive in Hamashiach Yahushua. I like to think about it as if trying to find a penny, you know, a bronze, you know, a, a worthless penny. 
in a room full of gold. All right, that's not even comparable, man. All right, so it says, I reckon that this that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, man. All right, and that's called short term pain for long term gain. All right, this is the book of John, chapter 12, verse 25. And it says, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life and this will shall keep it into life eternal. Okay, let me read that again. The book of John chapter 12, verse 25. He that loveth his life, his life shall lose it. And that's right there. That's, sh that's called short-term gain for long-term pain. Okay, long-term pain. All right, because that's a short gain right there to love your life, to love this world. To attain temporary glory in this world, in order to, to the, to, to you know the, to bypass people's means, right? To be loved by the world, right? But in reality, the scripture says what? Though those people that say that try to save their life on this go round, they're gonna wake up to everlasting shame and contempt, man. They're gonna wake up to everlasting shame and contempt. So that's why this is called. Short short term gain for long term pain because you're not really in reality you're really not gaining anything out of this. Okay, being a partaker of this world. When really when you look at it, nothing in this world is ours. So why not sacrifice for it? For something better. Something that's gonna last forever. Why not sacrifice for it? Nothing in this world is ours, man. Alright? So this is the book of John, chapter 12, verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it. You're going to lose it, man. All right. And it says, he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it into life eternal, man. And that's the reward that we're looking for, man. That's the reward that we're patiently waiting for. All right. Sacrifice in this world in order to enjoy real life, man. All right. And that life is going to be life eternal, man. And Hamashiach Yahushah. All right. So make the investments now, man. All right. Make the investments now. This is the book of. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 27. And this right here, this goes into the things, you know, that if brothers haven't already, you know, that you're eventually going to have to make in order to. And to order to receive that life that you're patiently waiting for, man. All right. The disciples told Yahweh Shah, I'm gonna just read it. They told Yahweh Shah that they sacrificed everything, man. All right. In the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 27. And Pete and it says, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? All right. What shall we have therefore if we sacrifice everything? All right, for the name of the Lord, not sacrificing and you know not sacrificing everything because you made dumb mistakes. All right, for a person that wanted lived you know the street life, you know they do dumb stuff and now they paying the rest of their time in prison. All right, that's not the sacrifices that the scriptures is talking about. It's talking about sacrificing this world in the name of Yahweh Shah, Yahweh by Hashem Mashiach Yahushai. So Peter asked him, if we forsaken all, what shall we receive therefore? Verse 28. And Yahweh Shah said unto them, Verily I say unto you, it says that ye which follow me, okay, you have to follow Yahweh Shah, right? And the regenerations, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And that's going into be that's going into being a joint heir with Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah sit upon his throne of glory. And we're going to sit on his right hand side, man. All right. Judging the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. Being the elect. Verse 29. And everyone that have forsaken houses or brethren. And these are the things. Verse 29 is going to all the things, you know, that if you haven't already, that you're eventually going to have to make. All right. It says everyone that have forsaken houses. Because, because. When you're a follower of Yahweh Shai and you're doing the pain in this world, it's going to be a conflict of worlds, man. It's going to be a conflict of worlds. So are you going to forsake and give up the world of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai? Or are you going to give up 
this 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 wicked world of sin. People people hating Yahweh Shah, hating his ways. All right. So it's going to be a conflict of worlds. So you're going to have to eventually give something up. And if you make the right decision, these are the things you're going to have to give up. Verse 29. And everyone that had forsaken houses or brethren or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Because these are just some of the things that may that may conflict between the truth, man. And they're going to have to go, man. And it may, you know, it's easier said than done. But you want to have to endure that short-term pain. But there's a reward for it, man. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a profit that you got to be able to see it far off, man. Because it's a, it, it's, that profit is going to be a long-term gain, man. And not only long-term. The scripture says what? That it's going to last forever. All right? So it says, and read that again. Everyone that have forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake. And that's what I was talking about before. You have to endure this and sacrifice and endure this pain for Yahweh Shah's name's sake. Okay. Scripture says what? Shall receive a hundredfold, man. So you shall be a blessed a hundredfold, man. Manifold. If you sacrifice these things on this go round in this world, you're going to get it all back in the kingdom of heaven times a hundredfold man all right so this is an investment worthy of making man it's worth it you shall receive a hundredfold all right you lost a woman because of the truth you know it was a conflict of worlds don't worry because not only you, you know you may get her back but we not even worry about getting her back man scripture says what you 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 gave up one woman for this world you're gonna receive a hundredfold man all right you, 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 you gave up, you know, uh, your status in this world. Yahweh Shah is going to give you a status in the kingdom of heaven, man. What's better than being of the 144,000? You gave up a house. The scripture says what? That, the, that Yahweh Shah has, 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 has mansions stored up for us in the heavens, man. Yahweh Shah is going to give us planets, man. So what? The scripture says we shall receive a hundredfold. Those, those men that, you know, sacrifice their lives and... And, uh, and uh, you know, gave up the life of not having children. Okay, that's a big thing, man. You know, because brothers, you know, you know, I know brothers can attest to it. You know, I, you know, I want children, man. But I know, you know, a man with wisdom, you know, they know that they just, they just can't have children in this world. Okay, it will be the wrong move to make. But you sacrifice that for Yahweh Shah's namesake, you shall receive a, hundred, a hundredfold, man. So we're going to have many children in the kingdom of heaven. Many. The scripture says what? That one shall become a nation. That's how much children we're going to have, man. So it says you shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. And that's the important part right there. It says we shall inherit everlasting life. So these things that we gain back, okay, the investments that we make and we profit off of that, we're going to enjoy it. But not only are we going to enjoy it, we're going to enjoy it life everlasting man we're gonna enjoy it forever okay so endure the short-term pain in order to gain the long-term gain man do it because it's worth it man this is a this is a one this investment is worth it man it's worth it and as the times and as process uh, as prophecy progresses you know we 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 uh we come closer to the finish line man all right, we come closer to the finish line, and the things that we sacrifice, man, we're gonna get them back, and we're gonna enjoy it, man. We're gonna enjoy it. Verse thirty. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Okay, the last shall be first. All right. So let me grab the book of First Corinthians, no, Second Corinthians, chapter four, verse seventeen, and it says, "For our light affliction." Scripture says it's just light. Okay, it's short. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Okay, so like the analogy, like I uh, gave earlier, the light affliction, the short, the short pain that we're going to, we're going through, is trying to find a, a penny 
in a room full of gold. It's not comparable, man. Okay, so this is why the scriptures call it a light affliction. Because when we receive the kingdom of heaven, those will we be the elect, man. You're not going to be thinking about, the, you know, the pain that you had to endure in Babylon. You're going to be too busy enjoying life. Okay, real life. So this is why the scripture says it's just a light affliction and it's just for a moment. And we have something to, to, to look forward for, man, which is, a, a, you know, eternal life, glory, all right? reigning alongside our Lord, man. Haman Shiach Yahweh Shah. Now, this is the book of Colossians, chapter three, verse one. And it says, if ye, if ye then be risen with Yahweh Shah, because, you know, we, you know, we died in this world, man. We crucified our old man. We crucified our old self. And we still, we're still, we crucified our old self and we continue doing it. All right. And it says if we, so we've been risen because we risen with Yahweh shot. All right. By what? Coming to this truth. And it says if we be risen with Yahweh shot, seek those things which are above. Where Yahweh shot sitteth on the right hand of the most high. Set your affection on things above and not on the things on this earth, man. So we be supposed to set your affection on the kingdom of heaven, okay? Where, where righteousness dwelleth, man. Set your affection on things above and not on the things of this earth, man, because the thing that's on this earth is temporary, man. Nothing lasts forever in this world, but in the kingdom of heaven, guess what? That affection will last forever, all right? It will last forever. So set your affection on things above and not on the things on this earth. And also because nothing on this earth is truly yours, man. It can be taken away from you in the snap of a finger. All right. Verse three. For ye are dead in your life. It says, Lord, we are dead. We're dead to the world. But what? Your life is hid with Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Okay. And this is what we, you know, look forward to. Okay. Our life appearing and we shall appear also with him in glory. Okay. So I'm going to close out with the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 17 again. And it says, if children and heirs, heirs of the most high and joint heirs with Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, man. So, and so endure the short-term pain in order to gain that long-term benefit, man. In order to, in order to, you know, gain the long-term gain. All right. So with that, you know, I hope you brothers out there was edified. I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rokhachadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone GMS, and the Shalom to the elect. Until next time, I say Shalom.